Today we're traveling back in time to the land of digital cameras and duck faces to look at my old knitting and crochet projects circa 2008 to 2012. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are returning. We're gonna do something really fun today because I don't know if you're like this too, but every once in a while, I just like to scroll back and look at old photos, or in this case, scroll back on Ravelry and look at old projects. So I have been knitting for about 18 years, crocheting for about 16 years, and I have the fortune slash unfortune of getting onto Ravelry really, really early. I was a Ravelry user as early as 2008. Actually, I went back and I found my very first dated project, which you can see here is this swirly bath mat that I made out of kitchen cotton. I thought we would walk down memory lane together and look at some of the past projects that really stand out. I'm doing this a little bit differently than I do other project videos. Usually I have gone through everything. I've kind of picked out, you know, patterns if I'm gonna share patterns with you, projects if I'm gonna share project ideas with you. But this time I thought it would be really fun to just do it like, raw reaction, like I have not scrolled through except to the very end to look at that very first project. So we're gonna get, you know, the most authentic and natural reactions today. So let's get started. So I am on Ravelry here and the first thing I'm going to do is scroll, actually wait, did you see that? Ravel, Rav, Raveler since May 11th, 2008. That was the year that I was in I think a junior in high school or going into my junior year of high school. Okay, scroll on down to the bottom if you are on mobile. If you're on your computer, it's a lot easier. You don't need to do this. And I'm gonna click disable mobile view. If you don't see that on there, that means you already have. That will allow me to then go to my notebook and my projects and I can actually filter this by year. So right here at the top, filter projects by, I am going to select year completed. Scroll over a little bit. Let's just tick off 2008, oh gosh, can I not choose multiple? Let's try, yes, 2008, 2009, I guess it's gonna make me refresh every single time. On your computer, I think you can just do all of this. Okay, great, I have all of my projects here from 2008 to 2012, so let's scroll down to the bottom, shall we? And take a look at one of the first things that shows up here. Okay, this is actually really sweet. I made this project and I was so, so proud of it. It's this little lacy dress, let's see, the pattern is called Lacy Tank Dress by Beth Walker O'Brien. I made this for my first, like first little cousin. We have the big cousins, which includes me and my uh, paternal cousins, I guess you could say. And then we have the little cousins. Um, and I made this for my first little cousin. And something to note here, actually, let's see if we can get this even bigger. I don't think you can tell from this picture, keep in mind, this is digital camera era. So I did not have well, even if I did have a phone camera, it would not have been very good. But if you notice these eyelets here, they're really big on one side and they're like not noticeable at all on the other side. That is because I had not learned yet that you have to yarn over a certain way on a pearl row. I can't remember exactly how this fell here, but I remember that I would do the yarn overs and then I would knit the next row and they would disappear. And I went into a yarn store in Greenville, South Carolina, and I was like, can you help me? I don't understand why some of my like lace is showing up and some of it's not. And I didn't know enough about knitting at the time to like be able to explain it further than that. We couldn't figure it out. I didn't like sit down and knit to show them. They just were looking at it. And I remember learning later on that it was because on the pearls or something, I was like yarn overing the wrong way. And so then I would just twist it closed when I knitted it. Anyway, good times. But I did make this cute dress and these little booties, um, which turned out so adorable. Ah, uh, I see something very reflective of, of uh, what I like to do in the past and honestly what I like to do now in the future. These are some leg warmers, but guess what I made them out of? Lily Sugar and Cream, which is a 100% cotton yarn that does not have any stretch at all. Why did I think it was a good idea to make leg warmers out of cotton? 
probably that's because that's what I had <laughs> at the time. So I was a ballet dancer all throughout like elementary school, middle school, and high school up until I was 16 and then I quit. Um, I was very, very into ballet, very into point, and still love that so, so much, but not for me personally. Um, so I did make these leg warmers and I remember making them. I would measure along my leg at different intervals and I would decrease and increase as, as needed to fit. Of course I had to because I was using cotton, which has no stretch. And it looks like I did these out of stockinette stitch. Yikes. I'm lucky they went on my legs <laughs> at all. Um, but anyway, I think this is kind of cool to see where, you know, something that I was doing in, hold on, what year was this? In July of 2000, May to July of 2008, it has now turned into something that I do now, which is a custom fit sock course, my perfect fit sock course. So I've always kind of loved tinkering with things, but I won't actually publish a pattern until 10 years later in 2018. Okay, I love this because the Olympics are going on right now while I'm recording this. I think they will be finished by the time this goes up, but this looks like one of my first Olympics projects. So if you're not familiar with the Olympics projects, basically you select a, a project that's going to be a challenge for you. And Ravelry used to host this. They were called the Ravelenics or they were called Ravelry Olympics, I think. And then they weren't allowed to use Olympics anymore, so they changed to Ravel Linux. They actually might still do it, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but it's it was a really fun thing to do and such a fun challenge. So you'd pick a project, you'd start it during the opening ceremonies, you try to finish it by the closing ceremonies, and this year I picked a blanket. So it looks like I started this August 8, 2008 and finished it by August, uh, August 24th, but I picked uh, Lion Brand Thick and Quick. Love that yarn. It is so awesome. And I made this wild blanket. Oh my goodness. I'm guessing I had somebody ask somebody to take a picture of me here. How funny is that? Chose some fun colors. I actually kind of remember making this and it was a really good time. I want to show you a project that I was really, really proud of. I made this for my little brother. It is uh, actually, let's read the pattern, the Nintendo DS case by Becky Travis. It is a crocheted case for a Nintendo DS. Do they still make those? I think they're, what are they called now? I think they're still called a DS. Anyway, uh, they're not this bulky anymore, but I'm sure there's lots of updated patterns. But I was so proud of myself for making this, putting the little mushrooms on, decorating them. I used to do a lot more finicky stuff and I wasn't, like nothing stopped me from doing it. Now I'm like, eh, it sounds really finicky. I don't know if I want to do that, all those little pieces. <laughs> and back in high school, it was so much fun. Like it didn't bother me to do things that were small and finicky. I actually look through this right here. It had these little tiny pockets um, that, ha that you could put different games in, which is so wild to me. And I even sewed in a zipper, which I didn't even realize I knew how to do. So Bravo for me, I guess. Um, if I ever had a sweater that I needed a zipper sewn in, I would take it to, there was an alterations place next to the yarn store that I worked at. And so I do that for garments or things that are like really high, high stakes, you know? And then look at this, oh, I was blocking it. I think this is acrylic yarn, so it probably didn't do much for it, but uh, I think that's, no, it's not acrylic yarn. Okay, never mind. I use Cascade 220, wow. That's pretty nice. Anyway, very proud of this one. And actually my brother still brings it up to this day. Get out of here. This is the, <laughs> Jesus. This is the moodiest photo I have ever seen. Hold on, we need to look closer at this one. Okay, in order to take this photo, because you couldn't just like hold your phone out and look at a front facing camera, I had to get a digital camera turn it around. I don't know if I had the flip screen on. I don't think I had the flip screen. I think that came later on. Turn it around, hold it, and then I had to be all moody. And this picture is actually taken, and so I'm in my parents' house right now where I grew up, and it's taken in the dining room, sitting on the floor, like, and then I had to upload it, and then somehow I put a filter on it. I don't even know, maybe, I, maybe my camera could take black and white photos. Anyway, these gloves, I made so many pairs of them. When I was working in high school at Bliss Yarns, I was doing anything to make extra money. And I really loved knitting and I loved making things for other people. So somebody, I think either I was making these gloves for somebody 
or I was making them for myself. I don't know. And somebody else saw them and they hired me to make a couple pairs. It was a cashmere yarn. Um, doing this, doing commission work was such a fun way to get to try all kinds of yarns that I couldn't afford as a high schooler. You know what I mean? Like cashmere yarn, come on. Even working at the yarn store and having a job, that wasn't really part of my regular budget. And so I got to work with these dreamy yarns, make all these fun projects, and then, you know, make somebody else happy. So I did a lot of that in high school and it was really, really fun. Who remembers this beaded scarf? This went like wildfire through our local yarn store. We are now getting into 2008, 2009. This is called Susan Undulating Wave Scarves, Scarf by Laura Nelkin, who you probably do know because Laura Nelkin is still making and creating amazing patterns. We actually uh, talked about this, I think, Laura came on, she's come on, she's come on more than once. I think I've had her on with my membership. Um, I'm getting like things that I've attended that she's been on that I've attended personally and her coming on to my stuff mixed up in my mind. But um, she did, yeah, she came on and she taught us a beading class, a basic beading class. And I told her that I made this scarf and didn't realize it was her pattern and just had connected it. So yeah, I did finish the scarf. It doesn't look like I got a finished photo of it, but this was one of my first times working with beads and I realized that I really, really loved it. I wouldn't say this is the easiest pattern with beads. The pattern itself is not hard, but because you're pre-stringing the beads, that I didn't enjoy as much as I do like scooping them up and putting them on. But if you're looking for good beaded patterns, Look no farther than Laura Nelkin. Follow her Instagram. She always has so many handy knitting tips. Oh man, the felting craze. Okay, I think I made several pairs of these snugs. They were, you know, like a play on Uggs where you knit them out of Cascade 220, not the non-superwash one. And then you would felt them in your washer and they would make these really cool boots. Um, I think I made more than one pair, although I'm not really seeing them on here, but these were for me. Um, they were also something, a different kind of a pattern, a, a muck look that we wore as ballet dancers and we, there would be suede on the bottom. So I think at some point I might've bought some suede to put on these, but I remember making a ton of these and these being a huge craze at the local yarn store. Did these come up for you at all? Imagine it's 2010 and you're just looking for fun jewelry to wear and your girl can make some. Okay, I made all of these, I think actually really fun necklaces. Again, I got into beading with that scarf and then I I don't remember if I found some kind of tutorial or what. Um, oh yeah, it looks like infamous beaded necklace tutorial by Devin Clement. And I made a bunch of these and I thought they were really, really cool. I mean, look at this. I feel like that looks pretty, pretty fancy. Um, I made some for myself, for my mom, for my friends. Don't think there's some, some necklaces right here. And then I started getting artsy with my photos as everyone was in 2010, right? We had a digital camera. We thought we would, we were like gonna be the next photo blogger or whatever. So look at these improving. <laughs> photographs here. Um, and there was one more I think I saw. This one I believe I made for a friend. Oh, you can't really see it. But I did like a more of a crochet thread and wooden beads. I had a lot of fun doing these. Um, and I think they would still be something you could kind of bring in and modernize now. 2010 was also the year that I graduated high school and went to college and I made myself a hat. I don't think I ever wore this hat actually in college or like to the game, but maybe I did. And oh my gosh, <laughs> look at these photos. Also, you can see, is that my dorm room? <gasps> you know what? I must have brought it to college. How funny. And oh, look, somebody made her laugh. What in the world? <laughs> Man, selfies are so much better now. These are so cringy, but it's okay. We're all cringy. I'm still cringy now. This is very cringy. But anyway, I just made a simple hat. It looks like I use a pattern NFL super fan hat recipe and then did a duplicate stitch of this power tee. I went to the University of Tennessee. I feel like I did a pretty good job. This would actually spark a whole series of different um, college themed hats, team themed hats that I would make. I would get so much better over the years, but not in 2012. I kind of stopped knitting and crocheting in college and then got back into it in 2014 when I graduated. So there's not a lot to show um, from here on out, but I did 
Uh, I did make, I did improve, I promise. I think we'll end with something that I am seeing on here that I still have. Out of all the projects that I've gone through, I think my brother probably still has his case. I think that my mom might still have a few things, but the only thing that I know for sure, actually, just kidding, there's two things that I know for sure that I have. One is this cute little pin cushion. It's called My Little Posy, but, and it's a, the pattern itself is called Posy by Chris Knits, and it is just a really cute little pin cushion. I still keep my pins that I used to block with in here. I finished this in July of 2010, and 14 years later, it still looks good, and I am still using it, which is wild to say. And then one other thing, these ball band dishcloths. When I used to share a lot more of my like home life stuff when it was more interesting. I, I don't know, I guess it's still interesting now, but not like the cooking and everything. But I always got asked what dishcloths I was using. And these are the ball band dishcloths. They came in a book um, from Modern Daily Knitting, Kay Gardner and Ann Shane. And I made these, it looks like I started and completed them in August of 2012. So 12 years later, I'm still using them. We have them in the van. I love them. They wash up so well. They're so great. I don't actually use them to wash things. I use them as like hot pads. So putting things into the microwave, I will, you know, put a bowl into the microwave, microwave it, and then I can scoop underneath and pick up that dishcloth and pull it out. So they're the best because they're nice and super thick. This is an excellent use of sugar and cream. <laughs> not the leg warmers. Well, that was a riot. I hope you had fun because I sure enjoyed doing it. I would love to hear what kinds of projects you were making in that 2008 to 2012 range. There's kind of a big difference. As I said, I didn't really make as much as I got into college, but it's always fun to look back at knitting projects and crochet projects and kind of see like how they change ebb and flow throughout your life. For me, it's not just that I'm always trying to learn new skills and to get better, but the things that I enjoy making will change. I didn't talk about any of these, but there were socks in there. I've loved to make socks and I still make socks. There's garments, but then there's those like cutesy, fiddly things that I don't really enjoy making as much anymore. I'm just rambling at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what projects you were working on circa 2008 to 2012. I would love to see if we have anything in common. I feel like there were a lot of trends going on in the knitting world. They didn't come up though. Maybe they happened later. Maybe I need to do another part to this video where we look at, you know, like 2014 to 2018 because I was definitely doing a lot of knitting then. Let me know if you'd like to see it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!